Hi people, welcome back to the tutorial on how to hack Metasploitable 2. I'm very excited about this latest episode and I hope you are too. Today, interestingly, we're going to look at two ports consecutively in order to open a shell on a vulnerable Metasploitable virtual machine. Quick heads up, uh, NetBIOS, what is it? Well, it allows computers and application to communicate with network hardware but also allow data um, to be transmitted properly over a network. It often runs on port 139, but it could also run on port 137, 138. Um, the other service is Microsoft DS, um, Microsoft Directory Services, um, which is used for resource sharing on all Windows operating system. It used to be XP on 2003, and also of assembler based connection. Microsoft DS runs on port 445. Um, the one thing they've got in common is Samba is running on top of both NetBIOS port 139 and uh, Microsoft Directory Services on port 45. You might be wondering what Samba is. Uh, it's essentially a network protocol used mainly in Windows network for sharing resources, for example, files or printers um, of a network. Unfortunately, history is not too kind to Samba. In 2017, the WannaCry and petty ransomware attacks exploited the vulnerability in Samba 1.0 to load malware on vulnerable clients and propagate it across the networks. Um, obviously, Microsoft eventually released the patch, but the damage was so great that a consensus appears to recommend disabling Samba uh, on all systems. And what we're going to do is use Metasploit to exploit it. So let's start Metasploit um, using MSF console. Um, if you're familiar with the procedure, you've got to make sure that your PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL database is up and running. I've got mine up and running. And um, you just have to open a new terminal, uh, as I did here, and tap MSF console, and then it's going to bring up the, uh, the Metasploit shell. Um, from here, we, we will have to use um, an auxiliary scanner. The auxiliary scanner is going to be Samba. Version. So this one is just going to confirm the version of Samba, which we've identified, um, if you remember, when we carried out the whole scan. But this is to double check that we actually have the, the right version of Samba in order to identify the right exploit for it. So let's find out what the options are. Right, so all we have to do here is to configure uh, the, the IP address of our remote host. Once we've done that, we can just run it and then sh surely it should be able to give us a version of, uh, of the sample we're running. Uh, it's as obvious as you guess and uh, it's running uh, Samba 3.0.20 and um, the same as, uh, the same app as the nmap command that we ran earlier um, when we did uh, the whole scan. Now, what we're going to do next is to identify um, any exploit that match the version of Samba. Uh, we're going to be using the command search exploits. Um, let's bring up a different terminal here. And let's type search exploit. Right, um, there's... There's two exploits here. Uh, one is a Ruby file, uh, it's got the extension .rb, and uh, the other one is just a text file. Um, we're gonna use the the username map script, uh, which is um, which is the Ruby uh, the the Ruby script. And uh, what we can do here is just go back to Metasploit and um, use our grep command to to identify that.
Right, we appear to have one exploit, it's quite old, uh, but it's categorized as excellent, which is good news for us. So we're going to use it about using it for new commands. Um, use one because there's only um, one script in there. That's fine. So let's find out what the options are for configuration. Okay, uh, clearly it, it's a metaprator. No, it's not actually. Um, it's a reverse netcat. So that's absolutely fine. So everything appears to be set for us here. Um, the remote port is being set to 139. It could also be um, the, the other 1445. And uh, so the only configuration that needs doing is the remote host IP address. So let's do that. Um, once we've done that, uh, we can just run the exploits. Just run as a person. Okay. Well, there you go. So it's, it, as I say, it's, uh, it's a reverse net cut, so it's not as obvious as a metaprinter. Um, but clearly, it has given us uh, access to uh, the remote, uh, the, the the remote machine. So you can run commands such as "Who am I?" to prove that's the case. There you go. Um, you are root, and um, we are indeed in high places with um, that level of privileges. And you can run a command like "ls." And, um, Um, it's um, it's quite it's quite extraordinary, really. But yes, and we 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 have a brilliant access to um, to the remote machine through um, through the shell, and uh, you can ls into home here. Let me see. Right. right so um, we have MSF admin in our home folder. So it's very good. So. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, please do stick them in the comments. Uh, this tutorial is done, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.